means. Welcome, everyone. Great to see y'all. Oh, TJ's here. Tell him I'm working. <laughs> hey. I hope everyone's having a great time this uh, September. All right, so the first topic we have regards... In, in regards to a update we made to the multi-factor authentication. So MFA is not something new. Uh, we added it uh, May of last year, um, but we did allow a bypass uh, for those who uh, chose not to implement it. Uh, they, we had a viewer uh, that you could uh, use that didn't require it. Um, but now we have, uh, go ahead and close that loophole. And uh, if you are using a viewer that is not requiring MFA, uh, you won't be able to uh, bypass it any longer. Um, so uh, while you're, that said, you're not being forced to use multi-factor. Uh, if you currently are using a viewer that doesn't use MFA, excuse me here, um, and you need it for certain systems, and we might recommend you enable MFA at this time, but bear in mind that you not have the enhanced account protection uh, you might otherwise enjoy from MFA. Uh, so we uh, did uh, alert uh, the third party viewers that uh, we are going to enforce MFA. Um, so they should be making uh, those relevant changes. Um, yeah, the blog post will go into more detail regarding this, um, but we have a secondary link that will help you set up MFA. Any questions on this? A lot of people, it might come off. I know a lot of people got a little worried about uh, about MFA, and you know, thought mm -hmm. we were going to be requiring it of everyone um, you know, to use Second Life. And no, we're we're not requiring it. But uh, if you do want to use it, uh, you will have to uh, use a viewer that can read it. That's okay. You're fine. If you don't, if you've not set it up, Teresa, if you don't use it, then it's not going to affect you. That would be correct for Kofi. Nobody needs to use it. It's not a requirement um, for residents to use it. Um, it is recommended. It's a little bit safer for your account, but you don't have to enable it. It's a very uh, easy uh, to install and easy to manage uh, third-party application, um, especially if you're a frequent user of Google. Um, it, the setup takes maybe a few minutes. Um, the page will give you a code, and you match it along with the multi-factor authentication app, 
that you download on your phone and you're set to go. Train LLMs, what is that? I'm not aware of that, Prokofi. Uh, any plans to <laughs> use our chat to train AI? Uh, Pantera, uh, I haven't heard that, uh, but uh, we're not able to comment on any uh, rumors or things that are still working or uh, uh, anything that has not uh, been publicly released. Um, so if it hasn't been an idea that's been sent in yet, um, I would highly recommend sending it in because um, any way you can further secure your account from, from any sort of compromise, I think is a good thing. And to uh, jump into another uh, little bit of something new here that we're working on. You all know about it if you've been here. Oh, um, can you just ask, uh, oh, can we, uh, answer Bunny's question before, no worries, uh, before we segue. Um, right now, if you have MFA enabled on your uh, viewer, uh, or excuse me, on your dashboard, it will be required for login access. But once again, uh, we are not forcing you to use uh, multi-factor authentication. I apologize. I think I uh, got my wires crossed a little bit in the beginning. So if you're not using MFA, uh, this change won't affect you. However, if you do have it enabled, uh, it will require you to use a viewer that is using MFA. All set, Vix. Hey, yes, sorry. You want to make sure Bunny got answered. Yeah, of course, absolutely. If we're not here for Q&A, what are we here for, right? So as many as uh, Wendy started to say, uh, the next uh, main topic here is our PBR viewer. Um, it's currently uh, in testing for the physically based rendering. Um, you can download the viewer on our uh, alternate viewers uh, page. Uh, however, you will only be able to actually utilize it on the regions that it's actually set for, which the main grid regions are Rumpus Room, Rumpus Room 2, Rumpus Room 3, Rumpus Room Room four and Rumpus Room five, um, so we basically have a few places for you guys to just go ahead and uh, take a look. Um, I would suggest that you go ahead and download it and take a look at it and start getting used to it, but. Um, the content uh, that is actually on there, uh, it doesn't actually work on non-PBR uh, related uh, regions. So if the region isn't set to be a PBR viewer, don't cross res things. So if you have something meant to work in PBR, it has PBR textures and everything, and you res it in a non-PBR region, uh, it could actually break the object uh, and it may or may not go back to working when you res it in the actual PBR one. Um, I'll get to that in just a second, Prokofi. Um, but right now, just those Rompus Room 2, 3, 4, and 5 are the only ones uh, that you can uh, utilize it on. Uh, so for right now, just know that those regions are where you can test. Um, eventually, once it's a little more wide, we'll let you know, you know, which uh, server types it's going to be on. Um, the other thing about it is you will notice that some regions are going to look a bit darker if you're using that viewer. Um, 
so it's something that is in a, a work in progress. Uh, there are some fixes that are coming through uh, that you should see possibly in the very next uh, update uh, that should be coming out hopefully by the end of this week, if not, should be coming out next week. Um, but if you look in the rhombus room regions, you'll see the sky as it's intended to work. It just might be darker in other ones because they're not set to have all the other uh, effects and everything like that. Um, I know there's been a lot of talk about probes and all of that. Uh, there's a system in place that does the external uh, uh, probes automatically, which is actually really cool. Uh, and then we're going to have tutorials and stuff about how to set internal probes but we're going to have um, some alternative methods uh, for if you're not ready to tackle uh, PBR modifications and stuff, then there are going to be ways around that system. So therefore, you don't have to feel like you have to immediately change everything in your region to be uh, PBR ready. We're going to have some interim stages, uh, basically, which is affecting your ambience and stuff like that uh, to make sure that you're not uh, basically back in the dark ages just because we've updated to uh, PBR. Uh, and here is a link for all of you guys. Uh, for more information on that, I'm just going to scroll back and look at, I saw a couple of questions come in, but I wanted to get the main uh, stuff on here. Uh, dark over as far as water I know that's something that they're working on I don't have the specifics as to where it's at yet um, water behaves obviously differently uh, than standard reflection so it could be a later phase uh, for perfection mirrors uh, are another thing that um, are a little bit more complicated but that's something else uh, that they're definitely working on um, and yes Things are darker, uh, Alexander, because of most regions not having lights, but there is a workaround for that that will be uh, brought up even more. Allison, I saw that you had a question, so go ahead and uh, uh, ask that. Oh, and Wendy just asked um, you to ask it too. Yeah, so, so uh, actually, I saw a club the other day um, that uh, so a creator I know, um, he actually made a club, and it's like, PBR and it's I don't think it's on a on one of the test regions so I'm curious how he was able to do that and like port it is he able to just like upload it what's the name of the region hold on a second let me actually check Sure. Now, obviously, I can't give you specifics about another person's region or anything like that, but I can basically let you know that there's some other way that was probably done. You know, uh, there's a lot of ways to fake what PBR does, but it's a lot more complicated. Okay, um, so it looks like it was on Whippersnapper. W-H-I-P-P-E-R? Uh, I think so, yeah. That's, if I'm reading that correctly, yeah. Yeah, it's probably using, um, you know, some of the big textures or some of the uh, it's shiny effects that we use. Actually. Yeah. Just, just to it's probably using some of the shiny out. effects, but it's not. Yeah. Well, you know, like it's, if you if so, what I noticed is if you use it, you you can see the floor and like the the I don't know what he used. I, I'm not a content creator, but you know what I mean. Like, um, you can definitely see the difference. Like if you use a non PBR viewer and then go to a PBR. Well, the PBR I mean, viewer is going to um, um, view textures a little bit differently anyway. So if you look at even a non-PBR region that isn't set to do PBR or anything like that, in a PBR viewer and a non-PBR viewer, they're going to look a little different because the viewer interprets the data differently. Um, but what he's most likely doing is just doing some kind of a fake out of lighting projection and stuff like that. Uh, right. Not actually, it, I don't see any indication of that region having anything different than anybody else's region. Okay. Yeah. I just was curious cause he mentioned it was like a PBR viewer and they're like advertising it or sorry, as a PBR club and they're advertising it as such. And I was like, I wonder how you guys did that because you know what I mean? Like it's not, 
I know it's not like live across the full grid yet, so I'm just like, how did you do that? <laughs> so it could be a sleek uh, way to kind of jump ahead of the competition and say, you know, you might have materials that are PBR view. But it, it, it's really the you know, the PBR viewer. Once you log into the PBR viewer, um, you'll notice objects that you've even had in your inventory for years will look differently. So it could be that he's using both the PBR viewer and maybe a few objects that uh, Wendy and Izzy mentioned to kind of enhance the experience. And given to the be... fact that we're only just uh, now starting to talk about PBR in a public uh, form, obviously they've been working on it for quite some time, um, there were definitely people that were using the many different ways that Second Life uh, has available to simulate uh, what PBR is now doing. Uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, like I, I am using a PBR viewer, but I just use it all the time because I actually really like it. And I love the changes that are actually like coming forth. Like I'm actually I, really, really excited. So I agree. <laughs> like, I, I, it I, is I, awesome. like it's going, <laughs> it really it's is. like going through night and day difference, like, and seeing SL in like a so much different, you know, you know, 14 plus years, you know what I mean? Like, it really is a nice change, and I, I completely welcome it. So you guys are doing. So I've been using it. One, I've been using it with regularity, and I agree with you. It's hard to. It's kind of hard to go back once you start using it. You start getting used to the way that uh, shiny effects work in it, and and lighting. Um, although the current issues with the day night cycle are a little bit off putting at times. Two last quick things to just mention on the whole PBR front. Um, number one uh, is the fact that the workaround, it's not going to be an opt-in, opt-out option. Uh, it's going to be kind of uh, parcel and region uh, specific on whether or not you're uh, using the workaround. But the cool thing about that is it's going to be very much like uh, the way Mesh was when it first came out in that you can decide to go ahead and uh, use mesh if you want to use mesh, uh, but you don't. You're not forced to go ahead and do it. But when you go to other areas that are utilizing um, uh, PBR properly, you're going to see all of those wonderful effects. But if you're in a region that's like, you know, the owner of that region, it's like I don't have time to deal with all the probes and all that kind of stuff, or it's not something I want to deal with. They'll be able to make their region look the old way too. So that's perfectly fine. It's not. Not a disabled uh, enabled. They're just going to be able to affect the lighting to where it kind of works the old way if they want it to. It's but it's not a your viewer does all lighting a certain way. It'll be region or parcel uh, specific instead of um, avatar specific. Uh, and then the other thing I wanted to say is after having been uh, with the lab for almost 17 years now, I was gobsmacked when I saw just how amazing a properly uh, set home is for the lighting that comes in and the different materials and how they reflect. And I mean, if you look at a before and after uh, images of them, it's a complete game changer. And this is by somebody who is not impressed easily anymore. OK, I'll get off my soapbox now. Um. Teresa, it, once it's released out uh, bigger than the test regions, we'll be able to let you know how to get it on the PBR. But once it's fully released, all regions will have it. It's just that people that don't want to have their region utilize PBR will have instructions on how to modify ambience to make it kind of work the old way. Oh, you mean like you you want to know what to do, so therefore it works uh, with the PBR and everything like that. Um, what it is, there's uh, the reflection probes that are out um, uh, in the outdoors will happen automatically, uh, and there'll be tutorials for how to put the reflection probes that work inside the house, uh, and that's basically... Each room might need anywhere from zero to four reflection probes, depending upon the shape of it. And uh, it's the 
real, real, real basic determination is you make a generic cube that's invisible to everybody except for you as you're making it, where the external uh, portions of the cube are what's being reflected back. So if I were to make a cube, if this were a room, I would put a a cube the size of this dome here, uh, so that way what's on the outside is is reflected. But we're going to have tutorials to show you guys how to do it and everything uh, once PBR is closer to coming out. Sorry, Teresa, I was kind of looking at your question in reverse. Hopefully that answered it. Teresa, um, I can't say anything about that specifically. However, it is definitely something that we have recognized would be a problem and have a solution for. Um, it's just it hasn't been fully approved yet, which is the only reason why I can't mention it. But believe me, that was one of the first things I thought of was Linden Homes and how close they are to land impact and everything like that. So that is definitely something that's also being um, a solution created for. Jenna, that's something that was brought up, but that's not the big solution that I'm talking about. Uh, and Prokofi, there's actually going to be a way to be able to see and not see your probes. So therefore, they uh, are easy to manipulate when you want to see them, and they don't get in the way of your resing and seeing and stuff like that when you don't want to deal with them. And now I'll turn it over to the next person. Sorry if I was a little long-winded there, but I love PBR. Oh no, it's quite all right, Izzy. I'm also I'm I also a fan, so I get it. Yeah, could you repeat that for us, Izzy? Because I didn't quite. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, um, in addition to that, there, we've had a lot of other uh, new additions recently. Um, there was just a post as we were sitting here talking. Uh, that went up to the Second Life blog, um, and I will post Jenna's Laurel, uh, talking about some of the other things that are going on. It does talk about PPR a bit, um, some of the additions there. It also talks about some of the inventory updates, uh, fixes that are going on for Highlight Transparent, um, additional language translations, uh, the emoji viewer, um, which is really quite something. Um, uh, there is an update in there on the mobile viewer. Uh, so there you go, Adam. I know you were interested in that. And uh, some updates uh, coming up for the uh, for choosing Linden Homes. So feel free to give that a look. I also, and this this is my my way of. Uh, I saw a question earlier. Um, about the uh, Halloween hunt and all of that. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the Halloween stuff because um, that's right around the corner, uh, especially here in Second Life. It's pretty much already started. Um, uh, we do have a Halloween shop and hop coming up uh, on the 5th of October. Um, that'll run through November 5th. Uh, you'll find a wide selection of Second Life creators uh, with seasonal gifts and other items available. Uh, we will also, um, most likely, you'll see some of the things we've done in previous years, like the the hunt and like uh, you know other areas that are specifically Halloween and gifts that are Halloween. So I would I would expect to see all of those again. Um, I would uh, recommend keeping your eye on the blog. Uh, specifically the featured news blog, uh, which is there. Uh, there will be more information on that. There will be information on the shop and hop. Uh, we'll have a shopping guide available there. Um, and of course, uh, in a couple of months, we'll have uh, our next holiday, and there will be you know signups for the uh, for the shop and hop and additional material for that. So please keep an eye out for that for both Halloween and the holidays. And same dark over. Same. Tulip, it will um, add emoji support um, to chat and, and likely other things. 
try out the, the there is a beta viewer for it. You can try it out and take a look. Go for it, Patrick. What you got? A name change would be probably the easiest option that comes with a fee based on their uh, service level, whether a base, premium, or premium plus. Um, yeah, and you have the display name as an option, but I, I think um, if everyone can agree to maybe a future or current uh, available last name, you guys can, uh, they can have a matching one. Old names, yeah, uh, although sometimes you'll find uh, names make a return. Um, we have a, a rotating list of names. Uh, usually we try to introduce new names, um, but there's a rare instance that an older name may come back up. Um, I don't think we have an ETA on the next release of names, so it would be the current iteration of the last names. Uh, if you guys want to go for that one, if they can all agree, let's choose this one or uh, holding until we announce the next set. Oh yeah, Halloween, will, there'll definitely be new names around Halloween. Oh, good question. Let me go ahead and fish that link for you. It's available on everyone's dashboard. And speaking of Halloween, although Halloween has already started, in my my opinion, it started like August thirty first. Um, this the spooky season is right on the corner, and Shop and Hop is coming October fifth. Write that date uh, that date down. October fifth, running a full month through November fifth. So as always, you're going to find a huge selection of Second Life creators with seasonal gifts. And other time and other items you're going to want for this event that'll probably be around for this event only. So you'll definitely want to be a part of the happenings. Let me go ahead and drop a link where all of the news will be announced first. Anyone isn't following the featured news blog, um, go ahead and follow this in the top right corner and choose what kind of updates you want to receive um, because we're going to be announcing the shopping guide. Uh, as well as other seasonal events uh, related to Halloween and then Christmas. You know, that's going to be coming up right after it. And Halloween, uh, for those who probably if, you know, weren't here last year, Halloween is a huge event in Second Life. It's massive. <laughs> the destination guide will be overflowing with amazing places to visit. It's like our national holiday. Any other questions on holidays, Halloween, etc.?
Oh, congratulations, Prokofi. 19 years, that's, that's a long time. Teresa, funny you should mention that. I was just going to talk about that. We did just roll out some more 2048s just a couple of days ago, and they, they got snapped up very, very quickly. Um, so we, we will have more out soon. Um, they do take a little bit of time to prep, not a huge amount, but they do take some time. Yeah, it was about two weeks ago, give or take at most. Um, but, uh, you know, we're trying to bring them up as quick as we can. Um, same with some of the other styles. Um, Prokofi already mentioned Victorian. Uh, we're starting to get more of those in. Um, and yeah, the stilts are also always very popular. So we're working on it. We really are. It's always one of the challenges with some of the Linden homes because we really don't want to just... Um, or I'll put it just cookie cutter and just give you the same thing. We want to try to make them at least somewhat unique between all of them and a little bit special. Um, and as a result, it can take a little bit longer sometimes. An excellent question, Darksider. We do not have an ETA for when that's going to happen. Uh, since it's still very much in the testing phase, it may be some time before they're rolled out to the Linden Home communities. Idea when PBR will be like fully released? Or is it like. Are you guys still like working on the bugs? I mean, I, I'm guessing you guys are because it's still a release candidate, but yeah, it's oh, yeah. very much still in active development. Um, but I don't think they want to put an ETA on it yet, just in case uh, anything new that crops up you know, whenever you have a development. And this is a, a pretty huge uh, haul as far as development goes. Um, so I wouldn't expect an ETA to come out until um, everyone is like 100% signed off, ready to push it. Exactly, Teresa. It'll be soon, okay. trademark. Yeah, and the other the thing future. that I would look out for is when you hear that it's being released to release candidates and stuff like that, then you know it's more further down the path. That's kind of what I figured with your guys' uh, uh, release candidate was like, okay, well, it's it's close. It's like very close, but still like getting the refinements. Yeah, that's an excellent way to look at it, especially with everything that is on the RC. It's stuff that is um, very close to being ready, but may have a few bugs or things that are we're still looking for feedback on or still in you know in the final testing. But that, it's definitely an indicator of how far it's come. Well, Darksider, that's because up until now, lights went right through your walls. So I think you guys mentioned this earlier, but um, I just wanted to kind of ask again, because uh, I know, like, people in like I've heard in like like uh, the firestorm like beta group or whatever um, I know they put out their like PBR alpha and people were like saying in there like oh I want to turn off the graphical settings or whatever that make the room darker and stuff like I don't know is that like something that's going to be an option for people or is that just something that's just going to be just per like land setting or per avatar setting or whatever.
So one thing, like was said, you're going to go ahead and add lights to fix that. Um, but there's also going to be a land setting. Whether it's going to be on the parcel level, the region level, or both is still in the works. But that basically you can have the lighting for that area, whether it be region or parcel, um, to behave like old Second Life did before PBR. Uh, it's not exactly an on-off kind of a deal because, and until it's actually refined to be exactly what it's going to be, I can't go more into that. But we're definitely working on a way that you can go ahead and not have to immediately adapt to PBR when it comes out if you don't want to. Okay. So, so I, I, I hope yeah, I didn't make you guys repeat yourselves. So I'm sorry. No <laughs> worries. You, I'm sure that somebody didn't hear it also, so there's no problem at all. <laughs> I think uh, with every major update, you know, the question of ease of access also comes into play. You know, how much of a shock is this going to be? how much adjustment time will be needed. Things like that are always considered. Well, it's just like I've heard a lot of people like complaining about it. And I'm like, you know, I'm not complaining only because I really like it. But, like, I know a lot of people are just like, you know, like when something new happens, people don't like it. It's kind of like how, like, back in the day when Second Life went from 1.23 to, to the V2, everybody hated it. Like, you know what I mean? It's the same thing, like... You know, not everybody's going to like it, but I guess having options there to at least help those users adapt to it, I guess, is good. So Exactly. And I look at it like when Mesh first came out, there were people that like, this is going to revolutionize Second Life. It's amazing. And others that went, oh, it's way too complicated. No way am I ever going to do that. And now, time later, you look around and a huge percentage of people have adopted to Mesh. Well, I, I just yes, like yeah, the OM portion of it personally because I, I just – I always struggled with the old mesh bodies and with the new ones with the BOM and stuff. I really, really like that because I can just right-click, add, boom, done. That and also it brings a lot more compatibility uh, with other uh, resources uh, for importing and whatnot because a lot of the way that we do things because we didn't have GLTF uh, enabled content meant that a lot of things that are available out there to import weren't possible. I may make a suggestion. I would argue that Linden Homes not having proper built-in lighting is actually an emergency situation because many users upon the release of PBR will see that their Linden Homes are pitch black on the interior. Like they won't be able to see when they log into them. 
that's actually, I can tell you, not going to happen because basically if we don't have the lighting uh, available, we will make sure that those regions um, have the workaround already in effect. Look at real life. We're in Second Life, dude. Chill. Like, oh, Second Life can't improve because there's bad stuff going on in real life. Yeah, fuck that. We'll keep the user group uh, focused on Second Life if we could. Yeah, like, <laughs> oh man, we can't have uh, lights in premium houses because of something, something in real life. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think a workaround could function forever, honestly. I think that everyone needs to be up to parity with materials and see the same things. Otherwise, how can we curate content for specific people if people can see that content differently? This was a problem with advanced lighting, where because people could disable advanced lighting, a lot of creators avoided using materials. And also, I definitely I get that, but the, basically... You can't take all of the existing Linden homes and modify each and every one of them. Uh, that would delay uh, PBR coming out by probably years. Um, so, oh. no, no. It, you, if you put me in charge of that, I'll get it done in a month. <laughs> In fact, if any of the the, the uh, contractors tell you that it takes years to set up internal lighting inside of houses then there, there's clearly a disparity in skill and the LDBW. Like to create a projector light, all you need to do is create a box and check a box to turn the light on, and then you adjust the radius of that light. And then you can copy and paste that light for every other house. If we were taking just a putting lights in the homes approach, that would probably work. That's the bare minimum. Now, to upgrade them all to PBR textures, that would take longer for sure, because you would want them to be GLTF models as well to take better advantage of the new normal mapping system, as well as. There's the a lot of actually different stages. There's lighting, there's re internal reflection probes, there's uh, GLTF textures, there's a lot of different uh, factors in it. But textures would definitely take longer for sure. But at the very least, I think that the interior lighting should be adjusted. Because here's the thing, objects with materials will be benefited from the PBR update. So if you have specular gloss materials, you can see reflections in those objects. So not every object necessarily has to be upgraded. Absolutely case. true, and I don't expect that every uh, one would be. But we are definitely looking into a few different ways to go ahead and bring Linden Homes uh, into the future and stuff. Uh, and I will definitely take your comments uh, as well but we should probably not monopolize uh, just on the one thing. So if you want to send me an email or whatever on suggestions, I've got no worries at all. Oh, yeah. Send an email. I have a lot of experience in 3D modeling. I've been doing Second Life uh, full-time for a little over 10 years now, a 3D artist. there should be a series of linden homes personally like per region so a single region doesn't just have the single home copied repeatedly <laughs> i do like that there is a variety within the regions of different shaped houses of the same art style personally yeah that's the uh effort to start the uh the, the revamp linden home communities as a unique um kind of when you go out and you, you find your home, you, it's your home. That's not the same as the one in the next region. It's because you have a corner house that is, you know, maybe adjacent to a pool or it has a, a home next to it that is not the same as the one that's across the way. They're, they're all uh, built by hand, uh, so to speak. And uh, the unique feel of it um, is, you know, maintain that uh, community feel. And I think even more so with the uh, premium plus um you know you know the release of premium plus and residents being able to actually browse in world for their future linden home 
you can act almost like browsing. I said, I think I said it a few uh, shows back, almost like browsing in real life for you know the house of your dreams. You're now browsing in world for the home in that specific spot uh, where you might be close to the water or close to the community center. And then you, you know, drop that solo on the ticket and let the mainland team know if you can get it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the the unique feel is, I think the 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 best part of the linen homes outside of the themes themselves. I kind of actually like that idea of setting up uh, resident-owned shops in, near the communities. Yeah, having more community spaces within the premium home regions would actually be really cool because people could walk from their home to a community center and go and chat with people who live in that area. Yeah, or go buy things from like, you know, their favorite content creator or whatever. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the best. Oh, you're places looking for that live... new chat too? Oh, it's right down the street. Yeah, I mean, the best places to live in real life are mixed mixed use spaces, right? Where people can walk from their home to a community center or to a shop, and people find these places very comfortable and spend a lot of money to live in them. So I can see how this could apply to the virtual world. The thing is, though, I, I don't see a lot of people like because I have a Linden home and all the Linden homes that are around me are just like abandoned. So I'm like the only one on that, like one row, I think, except maybe the one next to me, I think has somebody. But like the other ones just like all seem abandoned. And I'm like, I just look at it. I'm like, that's so sad. Like, I just want to see like a nice community, like put like nice stuff out, like. You know, I went all out and, like, decorated my house and everything, and, like, I don't know, I just, I, I'd like to see more of that, but I, I, I don't know, like, I guess maybe people are just, like, more focused on other things that they're doing or whatever. It's fine. That's a I, just... of it. I think that a lot of people are avoiding premium due to the quality of the premium houses. Like, I think with upgraded textures and built-in lighting, as well as adjustments to the layout of these sims to add commercial spaces and hangout spaces, to I think that would fair, make though? it more valuable for people and make them more populated. To be fair, though, well, I totally I disagree that people that were. They, yeah, I, I disagree that people are avoiding them. I I think that's uh, inaccurate. It could also just be region by region case too, like, you know, how many people are on that region or have a Linden home or whatever. That's probably. Mm -hmm. I'm true. talking to them on voice. <laughs> I don't know if you did streaming. <laughs> Well, the thing is, is that people are only online a few hours, most of them a few hours a day or a few hours a week. And so they could be at their home near yours, but not the same time you're on. And so you might not meet them. Um, I leave off lines for my neighbors when I move in and usually they respond to me. And um, I know almost all my neighbors on all four of my homes. Well, ultimately, Teresa, that's an issue with retention, right? I think that more people would spend time on Second Life if they had these kind, of, these kind of community spaces where they could go and have conversations with people. And of course, the more time people spend on the platform, the more likely they are to spend money, too. Yeah, like having like kind of like driving people to go to a place so they can meet people. Yeah, that's actually a really smart idea, because how else are people really going to meet people? I mean, people are looking for public spaces where they can actually meet people and then go from there. So, yeah, that makes sense. Work over. You're here now, so that's what matters. <laughs> yeah. Here because we're having like, conversations with other people. <laughs> you know, like, people spend a lot of time on Second Life just to make friends and, and talk with others, you know? I find that those are the kinds of events that really bring people together. So having community spaces at premium homes might actually have the same effect or similar one.
Let me also toss this out here just because we've got a couple of minutes. Um, I'm just genuinely cur curious. Um, what is everyone working on themselves? What's everyone got going on um, that they're doing in Second Life? I just want to know. Oh, good question. Working on a full PBR outfit, like a full mesh one. That is an amazing picture, Tulip. I have to ask, was this an event you guys put together? Very nice. What's it called? Quick question. Um, do you guys do these groups like regularly or? We do, actually. Uh, once a month, the fourth Wednesday. Yeah, fourth Wednesday. Oh, cool. All right. There's a number of other well. user groups too. Right. Fix it. I got to jinx it. Each We're just a bunch of rookies long. today. I, I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> I got the ball rolling. <laughs> Also, just going to post what uh, Strawberry just recently threw out uh, here. So were you guys affected by the whole Unity thing? Um, I don't know if you guys were like using Unity for the mobile side or not, but uh, I don't know if you guys were or are going to be affected by that or not. Uh, I did not know they actually rolled their decision back. I didn't hear that, so good to know. Hey, Adam, if you open up the, um, the Second Life news link, uh, we just posted, 
you scroll down a ways, you can find a couple of uh, teaser images from the mobile viewer. And also some updates to the Linden Home Store, because I saw there was a complaint about how that's working, too. And please don't miss the section on improvements to estate options. Fox, uh, I would say cautiously yes, although are you still seeing it? Because we did roll out a fix, but uh, developers did ask um, maybe a few weeks ago if anyone else was still seeing this i think we had one contact on it No, Teresa. Well, you know the process. <laughs> Send in the ticket. Uh, you give us examples of uh, your use, time, region, the whole nine, anything you can muster. And uh, how many people specifically are affected, i.e., I I how many are reporting it? That will also help so we can uh, get a better understanding of scale. Well, that's our time, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining us today, and uh, we'll see you next month. Yes, thanks all for coming. Thank you all for being here. We'll see you next time. Have a great one, everybody. Take care, all.